The roar of the engines, the pounding of treads on hard earth, and the thunderous roar of cannons, these are the sounds that evoke images of some of the most dramatic and intense moments of World War II. Among the many revolutionary technologies that emerged during this time, few had as profound an impact on the battlefield as the tank. From the first days of the war, when tanks were still in their infancy, to the climactic battles of the war, where massive armored beasts clashed in fierce combat, tanks changed the very nature of warfare. In this video, we'll be taking an in-depth look at the evolution of tanks during World War II, from their humble beginnings as experimental weapons to the towering, heavily armored behemoths that dominated the battlefield in the final years of the conflict. We'll examine their technological development, their strategic use in combat, and the key battles and military decisions that shaped their history. And along the way, we'll explore the personalities, strategies, and engineering innovations that made tanks one of the most iconic weapons of war. The story of tanks during World War II begins long before the war itself, with the initial spark of tank development in the early 20th century. The tank as a concept was born out of the need for a new weapon that could break the stalemate of trench warfare, a problem that plagued soldiers during World War I. The first true tank, the British Mark Thordner, was introduced in 1916 during the Battle of the Somme. This early machine was far from the sleek, modern tanks we think of today. It was slow, clunky, and prone to mechanical failure. But it proved that a heavily armored, armed vehicle could push through enemy lines and take on machine gun positions. After World War I, tank development continued, but it remained a niche technology, with only a few countries investing in its potential. In the interwar years, nations began to refine and build upon the lessons learned from the Great War designing more reliable and effective tanks. During this time, the idea of the tank as a key part of future military operations began to take hold. And by the time World War II broke out in 1939, tanks had become central to many armies' strategies. When the war began, tanks were still evolving and different countries had very different ideas about how they should be used. The Germans, for example, were the first to develop a doctrine of Blitzkrieg or lightning warfare which emphasized fast, mobile, and coordinated attacks that combined tanks, infantry, artillery, and air support. This strategy relied on the tank's mobility and firepower to overwhelm enemy defenses in a rapid, concentrated assault. The German success with Blitzkrieg tactics during the early years of the war demonstrated the power of tanks when used as part of an integrated, highly mobile force. On the other hand, the French, despite having an impressive array of tanks at the start of the war, failed to capitalize on the tank's potential. Their tanks were heavily armored and armed, but they were slow and lacked the mobility needed to keep up with the fast-paced nature of modern warfare. The German Blitzkrieg tactics quickly exposed these shortcomings, and within weeks of the invasion of France in 1940, the German army had overrun much of the country. At the same time, the British, who had been the pioneers of tank warfare in World War I, were beginning to develop new and improved tanks of their own. However, the early British tanks in World War II were often seen as underwhelming compared to their German counterparts. The British had a mix of light and medium tanks, with the most famous being the Matilda II, which was heavily armored but lacked the firepower to deal with the German tanks. The British would continue to refine their tank designs throughout the war, eventually producing some of the most effective tanks of the conflict such as the Churchill and the Cromwell. The Soviets, meanwhile, took a very different approach to tank warfare. The Soviet Union believed in mass production of tanks, and the result was the T-34, a tank that would become one of the most famous and influential vehicles of the war. The T-34 combined excellent mobility, powerful armor, and a potent 76-millimeter gun, making it a formidable opponent for German tanks. The T-34's influence on tank design can still be seen in modern tanks, and its reputation as one of the best tanks of World War II is well-deserved. Please take a moment to like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new daily videos. The early years of the war were defined by rapid technological advancements in tank design as countries sought to outdo one another with faster, more powerful, and more reliable vehicles. As the war progressed, these improvements only became more pronounced. Tanks became faster, more heavily armored, and equipped with larger, more powerful guns. 
The German Tiger I tank introduced in 1942 was one of the most feared tanks of the war. With its thick armor and 88 mm gun, it could destroy almost any Allied tank at long range. However, the Tiger had its own problems. It was slow, mechanically unreliable, and difficult to produce in large numbers. As the war continued, the Allies began to catch up. In 1943, the British introduced the Sherman Firefly, a modified version of the M4 Sherman tank armed with a 17-pounder anti-tank gun. This allowed the Sherman Firefly to engage and destroy German heavy tanks like the Tiger I and Panther, which had previously been almost invulnerable to Allied tanks. The Firefly, along with the development of new tactics and more advanced tank designs, began to turn the tide of armored warfare in favor of the Allies. By 1944, the Western Allies were deploying large numbers of tanks in key battles like the D-Day invasion of Normandy. And the massive tank battles in the Soviet Union were becoming even more intense. The Battle of Kursk, fought in the summer of 1943, was one of the largest and most decisive tank engagements of the war. The Soviets, armed with the T-34, faced off against the German Panzer IV and the Tiger I in a battle that would see more than 6,000 tanks in action. Although the Germans initially made significant advances, they were ultimately repelled by the sheer number of Soviet tanks and the more advanced tactics employed by the Red Army. The German response to these increasing threats was the development of the Panther tank, which combined the firepower of the Tiger with greater mobility and less mechanical complexity. The Panther was an excellent tank, but like the Tiger, it suffered from production and logistical issues. Despite these challenges, the Panther was a formidable opponent and continued to serve throughout the rest of the war. As the war moved into its final stages, the need for new tank designs began to take priority. The Germans developed the King Tiger, a massive tank that was even heavier and more heavily armored than the Tiger I. The King Tiger was a fearsome weapon on the battlefield, but its sheer size and weight made it impractical in many situations. Its armor could withstand hits from nearly all Allied tanks, but its slow speed and mechanical problems made it vulnerable to air attacks and artillery fire. The Allies, in contrast, had developed a variety of new tanks, including the American M26 Pershing, which was designed to counter the German heavy tanks. The M26 had a powerful 90 mm gun and was heavily armored, making it an excellent all-around tank. Though it arrived late in the war and was produced in relatively small numbers, the Pershing proved its worth in battles such as the Battle of the Bulge and the final offensives in Germany. By the time the war ended in 1945, the tank had undergone a dramatic transformation. From the early days of the war, where tanks were used primarily as support for infantry, to the climactic battles of 1944 and 1945, where tanks became the spearhead of large-scale offensives, the role of the tank had expanded and evolved. Tanks were now central to modern warfare, and the lessons learned from World War II would shape tank design and strategy for decades to come. The legacy of World War II tanks is still felt today, with many modern tanks drawing directly from the lessons learned during the war. The T-34's sloped armor, the Panther's combination of firepower and mobility, and the Sherman's reliability and mass production all influenced tank design in the post-war years. Even today, tanks remain an essential part of military strategy and are considered one of the most effective weapons on the battlefield. In conclusion, the evolution of tanks during World War II was a story of constant innovation, adaptation, and refinement. Tanks went from being experimental, unreliable machines to the dominant force on the battlefield. The designs of the war's most famous tanks, the T-34, the Sherman, the Tiger, and the Panther, all had a lasting impact on the way tanks are designed and used in warfare today. Tanks became symbols of the industrial power, engineering prowess, and military strategy that defined the war, and their legacy continues to shape the future of armored combat. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the evolution of tanks during World War II, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment telling us which tank you think was the most influential during the war. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay curious.